Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I'm um, I'm dissatisfied with our local government. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the main road, oh, county I know road, exactly where you're going. Yep. between me and my office is closed for... Resurfacing. Dude, yeah, and when when we say resurfacing, I don't mean oh, well, they're just going to throw another layer on top. No, they they're pulled stripping the, it out. They yeah. stripped the road. I drove by the other day and was like, there's no road there anymore. Yeah. It's just clay. Yep. Um, and uh, which, that's fine, although it's they're hoping that it's done before school starts yeah. again in three months. And I'm just saying, less than <laughs> that, dude. What? Well, now. But I yeah. mean, when they started. Oh, when they it, started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I got Which you. is ridiculous because it's about a half mile of road. Yeah. I mean, it, there's It really no... could. It seems to me that it should be able to be done in like a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you, I lived in Atlanta, there was constantly road work going on. But any particular section of road that was getting fixed. Yeah got fixed fairly quickly that's something tim told me about um living in houston Mm -hmm. was that that he was like dude road construction like they're always working on stuff but it's different stuff that that, like when they when they start a project a week two weeks tops it's done although i this does seem like to be something about alabama because i remember when i was driving back and forth to atlanta yeah there was like some sections of road around montgomery that were always being worked on. Just like under construction. Two miles of road that it took them, you know, six months to <laughs> do whatever it was that they were doing. There's no need for that. Like, I, yeah. anyway. So, but it, it gets worse. Yeah, it does. I know it does. <laughs> because the other, the only other actual option yep. between me and there, they keep shutting down half the lanes. Dude, and during not, the day to do work on that at the same time. Well, I came through there the um, Tuesday, the other day. They had it all shut down, and they weren't even doing anything. Oh, they never. I have never seen actual work going on. Either. No, they had all, they had all of it blocked off, like dwindled down to this like two little lanes or whatever. And yeah, mm-hmm. there was no active work going on. I was like, what is this? Every time I drive through the uh, the intersection at the other end of the main route between me and my office. Um, where all the trucks are and stuff right now. I mean, yeah. that seems to be where they're working. Yeah. I never see anything moving. No, all of that stuff. There were no, the day I drove through, there were no people out. Of, all that stuff was there. The equipment mm-hmm. was out there, but there was no active equipment going on. And the road's not even tore up. So I was like, can they just move the cones until they're working? <laughs> like, is that like a hard understand. thing to do? Yeah. So, and I drive by it four times uh, a day during the week because I still come home for lunch. Yeah, so so um, you'd know. <laughs> and so it's not like, oh, well, you know, I'm just driving by real early in the morning before they're working or real late in the afternoon after they're done. or Like, I'm driving by in the middle of the day, too. Well, I, I only drive by the one. And on Mondays, I drive by there at, like, 10 and then again at about noon, and there's still never, I've still never seen any work going on there. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I, understand. I assumed I had just missed it. Maybe they were taking lunch or something when I came through, but I don't think so. I don't know. Unless it, they take a much longer lunch than I do. If that's the case. <laughs> hey, that's the, and yeah. it, it just, I think a city work, every time I see city work around here, when I actually see work going on, yeah, it, there's like, Six guys standing around the hole and one guy in the hole actually doing something. <laughs> yep, that's... And the other guys are just standing there smoking cigarettes and chatting. Yeah, drinking coffee. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> one of them will We're have paying a... paying all one, these people. One of them will have a clipboard. That's the guy in charge. <laughs> right. Well, why aren't you getting five, <laughs> five other guys that are just standing there doing nothing to do something? You gotta love that government work, oh, man. man. It's unreal. I'm in the wrong business. No kidding. Well... <laughs> I couldn't work for the government. I know, I know. Um, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely irritating yeah. me a lot. It wouldn't yeah. bother me if they were just if I saw them working or yeah. if they didn't actually shut down the other road. Yeah. At the same. <laughs> oh, time. believe me, people were upset on social media this week over both of those roads being messed up the way they are. <laughs> like, I mean, do we? Because the, the there's nothing over- wrong with the highway. Yeah, well, that's the overwhelming thought was we can't do these things in stages. Does it all have to be done right at the same time? I don't understand why they would schedule that stuff to be done in the summer anyway, except that this road, at least, is like between it's two by schools. by the schools, but, yeah. Um, but still, like, I'm, 
those guys, no wonder they're never working. Like, I, so I will say this. Um, one more thing about the road work. So a <laughs> couple of years ago, they were redoing, it may not have even been that long ago, they were doing redoing 59, mm-hmm. and they did it all at night. And it was actually really efficient. Like, so, because I, I drove through there at night some, so it was a little messed up at night. Mm-hmm. But during the day, it ran just like it would normally. And so that's, you're saying they, they are. They do know how they're, to do this. They're capable of this. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, they are capable of doing that. I had my doubts about that. Well, so. I'm just saying I've seen it done. So. Well, um, the other, my other revelation from the week is that we wasted our time last week. Oh, yeah? Because, yeah, it turns out that the whole debate was actually a cheap fake Created by Russia and propagated by Russia. That's, See, so that's you're, what I've learned. So you're saying CNN was involved. I don't know if it was wittingly or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but apparently. Apparently. Yes. 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 The, the so, whole thing was a cheap fake. Wow. We should have known. Wow, we, I, you know, we, I sh, I sh, we should have caught that. You always yeah. got to look at the fingers, man. Like That's right. That's right. I didn't pay enough attention. Didn't pay was, attention to the was, hands. Yeah. I, I should have been paying more attention to the video, not just the audio. Yeah. So, oh, man, I got so many things to say about that, but we'll come back around. All right. Um, another thing, this is just kind of an update. So there are problems with removing Biden from the ballot, and we'll spend more time on that later, okay. I think, too. But... Uh, the the rumor that there were states where he was already the Democrat candidate on the ballot and that couldn't be changed yeah. seems to be just a rumor. I mean, yeah. I, I did some research, and as far as I can tell, there's no state that they can't make that change. They can't change who the Democrat candidate is on the ballot after the um, the convention. Yeah. Well, the convention just, hadn't even happened yet. Well, right. It's kind of a shame, actually, because I, I really wanted to point out how ridiculous uh, the ballot access laws were if it turned out to be true that the Democrats couldn't change the person they had listed on the ballot, even yeah. though they hadn't had their convention yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that would have been a real good point of like how stupid government is Yeah. Um, and how ridiculous ballot access laws if the, the candidate was already determined before the convention even happened. Yeah. Or how corrupt it is, like, yeah. You know, oh. um, but doesn't seem to be the case. There's, I, I can find no evidence that <laughs> the there's any state where um, Biden has to be the Democrat candidate on the ballot at this point. Yeah. So, good news, oh. I guess. <laughs> good news for the Democrats. I don't think it matters though. Um, and then, I don't know. Uh, so there was another Supreme Court case that we didn't talk about that we should probably spend a minute on yeah. before we move to the presidential immunity thing, which oh. will probably be the bulk of the this okay. episode. I was afraid um, you were going to say the presidential immunity one was the one we were just going to spend a minute on. I was like, oh, well, really? <laughs> I mean, we could just spend a minute on it. Yeah. But then I don't know what else we'd talk about because I got like <laughs> half got- a page of notes on that. So. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but there was the uh, the public camping Thing. Oh, the camping one. I forgot about that yeah, one. So the Supreme Court. The one Court, where they're banning homeless people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's what the media, that's what TV told me. <laughs> I, know. I I tell you one thing, like I didn't have a whole lot of trust in mainstream media yeah. um, before we started doing this podcast. Yeah. But one thing that I have to say that doing this podcast has just absolutely shown me without a doubt and hopefully anybody that's listening to this regularly that everything they say is a lie yeah it really is i mean it's kind of unreal how inaccurate or dishonest or disingenuous whatever that they yeah. are it, because it, it, whatever the word is whatever they're saying about anything if you look into it it's not true yeah yeah it's it's insane it, for it, everything. It, it, and it's, well, yeah, even like silly stuff. Like yeah. it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. I don't know. Maybe your local news when they're talking about the, the cat that got rescued from the tree or whatever, that might, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Even, that might be exaggerated, even, even those right? have an agenda sometimes. Yeah. Where, even the little fluff pieces. <laughs> so give to your local fire department. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, the, yeah, the, the public camping thing, the Supreme Court's decision was that the idea that that was cruel and unusual punishment to prohibit public camping 
it's no longer considered cruel and unusual punishment. Of course, yeah. you know, cruel and unusual punishment, what they were talking about is like people being drawn and quartered <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or flayed right. alive or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, telling somebody move along. Yeah, was, was not, was not the, yeah, um, yeah, you can't camp here. <laughs> yeah, and so, but some of the liberal justices were going crazy about it, and, you know, that um, that you can't, that this is cruel and unusual still because um, that sleeping is a biological necessity, and so you can't prevent somebody from doing that anywhere they want. I guess is kind of the argument. <laughs> is the idea. Well, I, you know, urination is a biological necessity too. Yeah, but you can't. You can just do that anywhere, though. Like, I mean, if you go to some of these cities, that's kind of what's going on. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's not that's not what we want as a society. <laughs> no, it, obviously, it's not. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't know how. I think it was Sotomayor that was saying that. I, I yeah. like. I don't know how she could make that same argument. Yeah. I mean, you could make the argument that sex is a biological necessity. <laughs> yeah. Like, do we want that anywhere? There's already rules. Like, there's rules about what you do with that in your own home in a lot of places still. So <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how this could be yeah. a thing. It just seemed, the whole question seemed so absurd. Yeah. Uh, so as far as, like, what the practical implications of that case is, um, can, so they can basically not allow people to camp on sidewalks and that type of thing. Yeah, um, uh, that's and, how and they I can be. A, my my understanding was that they can be arrested for that type of thing now too. I would assume so. If you can make laws pro- prohibiting people from doing that, I, what other? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be some form. That of has to be the. Mechanism. No, I'm not on board with that. I don't think you should be able to imprison people for being poor. No, uh, that's that's no, taking a step backwards. To, to me, though. And and this is just my my take on it is you you should have the right though to tell them to to go somewhere else yeah move along move yeah like because and and the the truth is we just we can't have our sidewalks and streets and stuff just littered with people I mean I'm mm-hmm. and I, and I think that there should be options for places for them to go like yeah. I mean I'm I'm all for all of that and I'm not particularly a fan of the government being that but seeing as we have a government right now I'm, yeah. I I will allow for that like. Yeah, you're supposed to have to explain to your kids about drug use and sex and so forth for them sneaking that R-rated movie that you weren't, you didn't <laughs> intend for them to see. Yeah. Not because they looked out their window and watched the homeless people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's supposed to be a different pathway to that, those yeah. conversations than yeah. <laughs> the way it is in some cities now. Yeah. So, um, I, I think that it was a. Uh, I think that it makes sense. I, I think that it was an a, I think it was an abuse of the cruel and unusual punishment um, um, phrase. Yeah. I, it's not yeah. cruel and unusual. Yeah. I, it's not even really a punishment as far as I can tell, but yeah. I'm sure that people could debate me on that. Yeah. Um so but then the big one that everybody's going on about <laughs> is the uh, the presidential immunity case. So yeah. We're going to start off a little different. I'm just going to let Biden explain to you what happened. Oh, sweet. All right, so here we go. I'm sure this will be plenty coherent. Uh, it's quite coherent. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, so, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't have clipped it. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not just trying to make fun of the man. <laughs> All right. Um, so, but yeah, this is perfectly coherent. It's, you know, it's a small bite, so he got to stand up there for a minute and a half and talk. All right. And this is what he had to say. He just explains the, the presidential immunity case. Okay. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. Today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent, because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. Yeah, that was surprisingly coherent. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, uh, he's right. It is a dangerous precedent. Yeah. Everything else he said there is wrong. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, you're right about that. <laughs> uh, it's not a new principle. 
Yeah. That's not what the Supreme Court said. Yeah. And if it was what the Supreme Court said, I mean, if they had made a decision based on the principles that they put forward. Yeah. It's still not what they would have said. <laughs> yeah. That the president has no limitation except for his own idea of what the limits of his power are. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Uh, I mean, that wasn't what I took away from the, the um, what do you call it? The clip? No, the, oh, the, the decision. The decision, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so first off, the president has always had special protection from the law. Yeah, well, and so that actually is what bothers me about this whole case more than anything, mm -hmm. is that the, uh, looking throughout history, we don't prosecute presidents after they've been in office for things they've done. Like nope. this is like it, this is it's happened this one time. Yeah, the, at least that I know of. Now I'm not. I haven't went back to. It no, hasn't this, in modern history. No, this this is the one time. This is the one time. Okay. Yeah, this is the only time that the the a president has been a Supreme Court has made a decision on a criminal case against a president because this is the only time that a president has been criminally prosecuted after he left office. Okay. Um, now it's not the only time that a president has been prosecuted criminally after they left office because this is Trump is the one and only president in history to ever commit crime. <laughs> right. Okay. All these guys are just saints. You didn't know that. I was completely unaware. <laughs> right. And if you want to try and make that case, you go right. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not biting that one off. I'll <laughs> tell you that. Um, no, this is, this is a one time thing because it's Donald Trump. Yes. And for no other reason than that. Exactly. Um, and in fact, what they're trying to prosecute him for is less of a crime than what his two predecessors did. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get more. To, we'll get into that a little bit more later. All right. Um, and you're right. So we don't we don't prosecute presidents after they left office. It's essentially like a gentleman's agreement between the two major parties yeah. because they don't, you know. I won't prosecute your guy if you won't prosecute my guy. That's yeah. essentially how well, this because, is Well, because because both sides want to do the same things. Mm -hmm. um, so because the stuff that they would be prosecuted for is stuff that that each side is is partaking in equally. Yeah. Um, now historically, actually, there are court cases that have determined that employees of the federal government. Um, enjoy a level of immunity from civil suits arising from official acts. Like that's been a, a, a longstanding yeah. um, opinion of the courts. Yeah. Um, the, there was a case against Nixon, which they actually referred to um, in 1982, <laughs> yeah. I want to say early eighties anyway, um, where a former government employee was trying to uh, bring civil suit against Nixon for, um, being fired by Nixon while Nixon was in office. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what the claim was that it was discrimination or unfair. Like he shouldn't have been fired anyway, whatever he yeah. thinks. And the Supreme, and that did go to the Supreme court. Yeah. Um, it was a civil case though, not a criminal case, but, uh, they said that the president enjoys immunity, um, against civil actions for, uh, for actions that he took for, while in for office. official. Yeah. 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 So, um, so this isn't exactly a new position. What the Supreme Court was asked to determine in this case is the scope of the presidential immunity, but there's a presumption of some level of immunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and there's, like, going back to uh, Supreme Court Justice Story, who was on the Supreme Court from 1812 to 1845, just to Damn. show you how, <laughs> how old this is. Um, I got a quote from him. He said, the president cannot therefore be liable to arrest imprisonment or detention while he is in the discharge of the duties of his office. Yeah. Now he was talking about specifically civil cases there. Yeah. But the statement is the president can't be liable to arrest imprisonment or detention while he's in discharge of the duties of his office. Essentially, the argument is that if the president has to worry about a whole bunch of, of suits or cases being brought against him, it will, as a result, limit the decisions that he's able to make while in office. Yeah. Well, and if he does something that's, that's wrong, there is a mechanism to handle that, and that would be impeachment. Correct. 
Um, yes, they, they can be impeached for official acts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, um, so, but the, uh, the point that I was trying to make here is this idea that it's something new is just absolutely asinine. Yeah. Um, there has been a, a debate at the highest court levels about the scope of presidential immunity for more than 200 years. Yeah. Um, this is the first criminal case that's been brought to the Supreme court. But this, the idea of presidential immunity, even from criminal acts, is not new. Yeah. Just ask Obama or Bush. I saw the, the nation actually ran a headline that said something like, um, it's official, the president can now order you assassinated, and it's legal. <laughs> and I, when I saw that, which is stupid. Yeah. Um, but when I saw that, I thought, oh, I bet Obama's happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I'm finally so- safe now. <laughs> So anyway, the, the court didn't actually make a decision about whether Trump can be prosecuted here or not. Yeah. They left that up to the, the, they sent it back to the lower courts. Yeah. Um, in this case, Trump versus the United States, they said, uh, we conclude that under our constitutional structure of separated powers, this is a quote, by the way, um, the nature of presidential power requires that a former president have some, (laughs) immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts during his tenure in office. Yeah. That was the conclusion. Yeah. Um, the, uh, essentially what they said was that they, um, they followed the, uh, I guess the precedent set by the George W. Bush and Obama presidencies in that, um, both of those administrations agreed or argued, I should say, um, that pursuant to their constitutional authority, they are not subject to criminal laws passed by Congress, which is how they justified, in George W. Bush's case, the torture regime, yeah. because it's his constitutional duty um, to prosecute wars, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. um, and then, um, and for assassinations for Obama, essentially the same argument, prosecuting terror wars, yeah. So it's outside of the scope of congressional limitations, essentially, because those are duties that are expressly or powers expressly given to the president in the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> Although I would argue only when we're officially at war. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, too. But the, the Supreme Court in this case is not going to go back and relitigate those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I understand that. I'm just saying, just putting that out there that... Yeah. Yeah. All of this was done under, under um, pretenses that didn't happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, another quote from the decision, though, is the president charged with enforcing fred- federal criminal law is not above them. Yeah. So they make it they, they make it expressly clear that what Biden just claimed, the court yeah. said, is not it's what not they what said. they said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And what they did in the end was they sent it back to the lower court to determine uh, if the acts in the indictment um, fall under the guidelines that the Supreme Court identified to determine whether the the acts that were committed qualify for presidential immunity or not. Yeah. All right. So, um, and they they said that everything was rushed through so quickly that the lower courts didn't do enough analysis of what went on anyway and that that's their responsibility at least as a first pass yeah and so this may come back to the supreme court <laughs> after the decision depending and yeah. in fact i suspect that it kind of will cuz i don't know that if, it matters who wins yeah i think the other side will probably appeal yeah. Um, we'll see. Now, what is really funny about that, though, is that Biden shouldn't have been concerned, right? Because if the if the courts actually had decided that the president has complete immunity, uh, that means him, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> and since one of the things that they keep saying about Trump is that he's going to go after all the people, um, all his enemies all when his he gets in office, enemies, yeah. Yeah. then this actually would protect Joe Biden from Donald Trump, if that's actually the decision that was made, but it wasn't the decision that was made. Um, essentially the Supreme court just laid out some guidelines to identify whether a particular action, um, was, uh, was a part of their, uh, 
constitutional duties. Yeah. And so they said that they would have complete immunity for anything that they did pursuant to their constitutional duties. Um, that there was a question about congressional uh, things if it was like maybe corollary to their constitutional duties, but not directly. They said that these questions are harder to determine and yeah. we're not going to do that right now, but here's some, here's some guidelines as ha- how to look at it and send it back to the lower court to look at it more to closely. Hash out. Yeah. yeah. So that's what happened with this, with this court case. It's yeah. not a, a free hand to the president and the people that are out there saying, well, now what Donald Trump said before about he could stand on fifth Avenue and shoot somebody in the head or whatever the quote was. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember exactly. It was something like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and nobody would do anything about it. Now that's true. No, it's not. <laughs> He's still liable for criminal actions that are not, um, that he hasn't done in, pursuit of his constitutional duties as president of the United States. He just, he just has to says as he's doing it, I'm doing this as an official act. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's all it takes. Yep. Um, so I don't know that there's a, uh, this is much ado about nothing. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it, if anything, it's, it, I, my understanding is, is that it's pushed that case back to, it probably won't see, see a courtroom till after the election. That's probably true. Um, that's been my understanding that, and the same with the New York, they moved the sentencing back with the New York case, um, over this too, because mm-hmm. they've got to relook at things now. Yeah. Um, so I think it's still, I think they're still planning on sentencing him. Okay. If your tail's going to go all crazy like that, you're going to have to get down cat cause you're going to knock something <laughs> down. Thank you. So. So it impacts those cases, but, um. It does, but it doesn't dismiss them. No, 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 Absolutely. Um, it so. may in effect in the sense that maybe the prosecutors no longer want to push it. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that they're going to still push it. I don't, I don't see that happening, but it, it just kind of mucks up the gears to, from them. Ex, 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 uh, I can't talk tonight. Um, getting this all done before the election. Yeah. Well, that was probably never going to happen anyway. Yeah. Which uh, it, it, but they got what they wanted already. So I don't, I yeah. think it's irrelevant to them, honestly. They already can say that he's a felon. Yeah, yeah. And that was the whole goal of all of this yeah. stuff. This was all, yeah, it was all just trying to to frame him as a criminal. There's only one felon here on the stage. <laughs> they, <laughs> Trump should have responded, convicted. There's only one convicted <laughs> felon on the stage. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, um, I, in, in reality, uh, I just don't think that it makes a difference. Yeah. Essentially, now, I, I'm upset about this decision. Yeah. I don't like this decision. No. Um, I don't really care about Donald Trump one way or the other, but no. I don't like making it official that the president can break the law in pursuance of their constitutional duties that and have complete immunity. Yeah. Um, so it kind of it just feels like, especially for future presidents, that it kind of gives them a pass or or at least some kind of shield if they do something like mm-hmm. really reckless. Yeah. Now know? they know that they kind of have a free hand. Now Obama can rest assured that he will never be prosecuted for um, murdering, ordering the murder of an American citizen without due process of law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now George W. Bush knows that he doesn't have to worry about being prosecuted for cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of all things. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, I, I do agree that it's a bad precedent to set, to tell, to make it official, to have a, a Supreme court, um, decision that says that the president is immune to criminal prosecution if the criminal act he committed was in pursuance of his constitutional duties as president. Yeah. Um, so it does put the president above the law as far as I can tell. Not completely. Yeah. yeah. But it, it does create a new tier for president. Yeah. Like all the rest of us are, are subject to law no matter what we're trying to do. Yeah. But the president has situations where he can completely ignore, he or she can completely ignore the law. Yeah. Um, as long as he or she feels that they can make a good case. Which the, the power of the presidency is already out of control. Yeah. I mean, I think this feeds more into that. 
um, as far as them just being able to do whatever they want, like mm-hmm. as far as executive orders and that type of thing too. I mean, I think it feeds into all of that. Yeah. Uh, now it does also avoid the, the problem of what we're seeing right now. Yeah. It, it does avoid the problem of presidents constantly indicting their predecessor yeah. in office. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, I don't know that, I don't know that I think that's a good thing, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and in fact, I would say that I don't think that that's a good thing. I would like to have seen Obama try and prosecute George W. Bush over the torture. And I would like yeah. to have seen Trump try to tr- prosecute Obama over the assassinations of, um, Anwar al-Awlaki and his son. Yeah. Uh, problem is, is neither of them were ever going to go after those things. And even with Trump, they're not going after those type of things. They're going over uh, after him for this other stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, because they, they don't want to touch that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's the type of thing they all want to be able to do. Right. So. And all should absolutely be prohibited from doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've got it upside down as usual. Yeah. Uh, I did want to briefly, you and I had a little bit of an argument about this the other night. Uh-huh. Um, I did want to go back briefly to the Louisiana Ten Commandments thing. Yeah. Because I I, I foresee problems with this. Yeah. Um, now, I've already expressed that I have a problem of it being like a top-down solution. It's a requirement that all schools... That I wouldn't actually have so much of a problem with it if it was... Uh, schools may display the Ten Commandments if they choose to. Uh, I, I mean, I, you know, I <laughs> when I ran for Department of Education, trying to play off the Trump popularity down here, um, my slogan was uh, "Make education local again." I mean, I would like to see local school boards have more control yeah. over what goes on in their schools. Um, coupled with the ability to take your kids to whatever school you want and so forth. So that, yeah, you can avoid. that's really the big one. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I can see is this coming back around to problems that we had in the late nineties and early two thousands, um, with, um, evolution, teaching evolution in schools and the push to teach, intelligent design in science classes in biology classes, which I have a real problem with. Yeah. Um, and so it, to me, it seems like the same. Once you start introducing supernatural explanations or supernatural sources into schools, then there's no, there's nowhere to go. Like there's no reason to learn anything or to explore anything or to try and figure anything out. And that goes for the law as well as it goes for science. Um, I mean, I think that if you, if you look at, uh, some kind of, um, divine edict about what the law is, then there's no reason to study morality or ethics or anything or try and come to a real root or even to understand, um, like the thing that we promote, which is the natural law, or, you know. Uh, yeah. Once you introduce the supernatural explanation for those kind of things, then you lose the incentive to to actually delve into them in any way because you have a ready-made answer that doesn't require any thought. Yeah. yeah. And that was my big issue with um, intelligent design being taught in a science class. And I like I took a college prep biology class where my teacher... When we got to, this is college prep biology, where my teacher, when we got to the evolution section of the book, said, uh, well, these these next two chapters are about evolution, but I don't believe in evolution, so we're not doing that. Yeah. That's wild. And, I mean, this is a a woman with a master's degree in biology. I don't even know how you get that far. (laughs) Like, learn enough to get a master's degree in biology without believing in evolution. Yeah. Um, You may rationalize it in some weird way to no. to line up with your faith i mean my my mom was a biology teacher she always said that these are two different questions essentially yeah um that uh you know the idea of creation the the ultimate source or whatever that's a um you know that's a question of who did it and evolution says how 
Yeah. And what we're learning about here is how. Yeah. And, you know, so that's that's that. Like, it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or not. It's yeah. a... And, and that's kind of the important point that I tried to make and ended up getting sent to the office when this teacher <laughs> said that she wasn't going to teach evolution and I argued about it. Yeah. Um, is that... Surprised she didn't say, you already, it sounds like you already know enough about it. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that should have been her retort. I probably could have taught that section, actually. Like, <laughs> yeah. I read so much about it. Evolution is one of those things that I really got into when I was younger because yeah. it's such an elegant yeah. explanation for so many things. And I, I, we're getting off track a little bit here, but I uh, developed an even greater sense of wonder about Darwin's whole thing. Yeah. Um, I did a uh, an independent study when I was in college on 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 the origin of species yeah which was just that that seminal first book that darwin put out explaining yeah the idea of mod, uh descent with modification and natural selection right yeah and i was amazed at how many both arguments and discoveries he anticipated yeah like it was so well put together yeah. it's really pretty amazing how far how far reaching his ideas were when he wrote them down in the 1850s. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it was yeah. really an impressive, elegant, full, like really robust idea. Yeah. Um, and it, it is science in that it has been predictive in the sense that scientists have said, well, if evolution is true, then we could expect to find in the fossil record, this or that. And then found those things. Yeah. Um, Intelligent design doesn't work that way. Yeah. And if you, in fact, the, I don't know, somewhere out West, I think it was, I think it was in the late, it was in that time period, late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. Um, somewhere out West, I say out West, it was like Kansas maybe or something, but Oklahoma, I don't know yeah. where, uh, there was a, a challenge to adding intelligent design through one of the school boards into their textbooks. And, in order to add intelligent design into the textbooks in science, they had to redefine what science was. Yeah. And so essentially what they took was the definition of science that seeks natural explanations for observable phenomena and took out the natural part of it. Yeah. Because that's the only way that they can make intelligent design work because it's an, it's a supernatural explanation or an unnatural explanation. Yeah. So by their initial definition of science doesn't fit it's not a science yeah now their first definition was right but they they changed it to say um natural or supernatural or unnatural or something but they, they changed the definition of science to make it happen yeah um and their new definition wasn't science yeah In too the bad same we way, couldn't do that with other things <laughs> well yeah i mean it's, it's the same as um the mrna vaccines yeah that weren't vaccines until we redefined what a vaccine was yeah you know? they are now um, so but the problem is that if you if you're trying to get hit now the US public school system already ranks really badly internationally in every category pretty much yeah. i mean for the developed nations i should say yeah i mean probably rank better than some you know rural parts of like southeast asia and africa and so forth but but on the whole for the developed nations for the first world nations the US public school system doesn't put out a good product. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so if you further dilute that by taking any kind of, of real search out of the whole thing, yeah. then I think that it's just going down the wrong way. Now, if individual school boards want to do this and you can take your kid out of that stupid school system and put them somewhere else, then I guess, you know, you want your kids to be dunces. That's fine. Yeah. I would hope that what happened in the late nineties and early two thousands in most of these places would happen in that case, which is if there's a school board that gets in there and they push something that's not science into science, then those people get replaced at the next election, which yeah. happened over and over again during that time period where this was a big issue. Yeah. But I can see this 10 commandments thing as being the wedge, you know, the, what, what is it? The camel's nose under the tent or whatever, <laughs> yeah. um, to, heard that to reintroduce, that kind of, uh, of, uh, changes in curriculum. Yeah. And so that's why it scares me. It's a yeah. slippery slope issue. Yeah. 
Oh, I get it. You're not going to argue with me on the podcast <laughs> like you <laughs> no. did the other night? All right. No. <laughs> Very well. Well, that's no fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, background to Biden and um, his appearance on the ballot. So, oh. man, this has been an interesting few weeks. <laughs> yeah. right? It's only going to get more interesting the closer we get to election, too. I know, I know. But the, the thing that I have been most amazed at is that, like, I'm not surprised at how hard uh, media and um, Democrat elites and so forth push the well, this is all just fake. All these stories that are going around about, I mean, Biden's mental health is just fine. He's just as sharp as he's ever been. Maybe sharper, yeah. like all that <laughs> stuff. I mean, yeah, but, seriously, well, things that people were saying then. Yeah. And then after that debate, when it was on full display. Yeah. In was, the in the in the format that they couldn't deny it because that the the cheap cheap fake cheap fakes things you were talking about earlier mm -hmm. like that was the narrative that all of these videos that were coming out oh well they're doctored or they're this or that yeah there wasn't any running away from this debate yeah. like uh, it was televised on TV everybody saw it it was right there for everybody to see well and some of his reaction to it too so then there was the interview um, where they're asking him about oh I just had a bad night and you know. Um, like they had his mic turned off, but you know, he's yelling at me while uh, while I'm answering questions, and that was distracting me. And I guess nobody told Biden that it was a split screen through almost the entire debate, <laughs> right. so we could see that yeah. Trump wasn't talking. No, he was he was actually very well behaved. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so, like, it, it's first it's an excuse, and then it's a lie on top of a lie. Which, by the way, just that that one in particular bothered me, just because. You're the president of the United States. Yeah, shouldn't you be able to work if, through distractions? Yeah, if you ha if somebody yelling at you is enough to throw you off your game, that's disqualifying in itself. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I want you making decisions in the war room with alarms going yeah, off. And, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, that ain't, that ain't good. <laughs> or even just in another room with another um, leader or something. If they yeah. if one of their assistants starts yelling at you, you're going to just give them the codes or something? Like, yeah, or <laughs> press yelling questions from the crowd. Yeah, or that, yeah. No, this is... I know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but then the that entire establishment that had been telling us all that we were crazy... Yeah. That there was nothing wrong with Biden, that he's sharp as he's ever been. <laughs> yeah. In lockstep, completely did an about face on that. Yeah. And started talking about his cognitive decline and we needed somebody else. And like yeah. Biden needs to step down. And they should have had enough sense. Like you asked me right afterwards if I thought Biden was going to stay in the race. And I said, yeah, that guy's not giving up. Yeah. <laughs> power. There's yeah. no way. Um, and uh, Glenn Greenwald, I, I listened to him over the weekend, um, or may, no, I guess it was earlier this week, talking about this. Uh, it was an older episode, I think. I don't know. I, uh, but anyway, mm -hmm. on System Update, he was talking about like Biden is a guy who's been in the Senate since uh, entered the Senate when he was twenty nine. Yeah. Wow. Now, if you enter the Senate at twenty nine. Like if you're at that level of federal government that early in your career, yeah, you expect to be president someday. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't plan to just hang out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this has probably been a life goal of his, a political goal of his since he first entered the Senate, that he was he had planned to be president someday. Yeah. And eventually he was the vice president. Well, I mean, he ran, he ran and well oh, yeah, he, he ran, ran in the eighties, yeah. yeah. Um and so now here he is. He's there. He's at yeah. the pinnacle. He's what he's where he's always wanted to be. Yeah. You think he's going to step just gonna down? Just walk away from that. And the idea that he would step down for the good of the country because he's just such a good guy. Well, have you seen anything, anything <laughs> in his career that would make you think that he would give up power just for the good of the nation? But that's no. the, it's funny though because that's what the Democrats want to push about him though is that mm -hmm. he's just such a good natured guy and yeah. this that and the other. It's like, man, have y'all not followed his career? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, there's tons of evidence to the contrary, but that's but even in 2020, like that was the narrative. Yeah, you know. I mean, just think of like him pushing those crime bills that that set up ridiculously long sentences for drug offenders yeah. and then tried to be a friend of the drug, the drug addict when his son got in trouble, like yeah. present himself as the friend of the drug addict, you know, like 
Yeah. No, this guy's full of it. Yeah. And he yeah. always has been. And he's been out for himself from the very beginning. And that's fine. Like, that's what I expect of a poli- of a yeah. politician. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, but the, I, the, that they, that they actually believed that he would step away because they asked at this time is just hilarious to me. Yeah. But because I guess they thought that they could do that or that they thought that they could put enough pressure on him, at least that he would step away. Yeah resulted in this complete fiasco that we have now, <laughs> yeah. which is that they spent two weeks talking about because of his age and his cognitive decline, he needed to step aside. Yeah. And now that it's clear that he absolutely will not. Yeah. Got to vote got, for the corpse. Yeah. You got two things going on. You've got publicly them pushing that. The, oh, no, no, no. He'll be fine. He's been fine through the first four years. He's got good help there, and we have to defeat Donald Trump. And yeah. you know what? Actually, if he was a, if he had been ahead in the polls, yeah, they wouldn't have even started talking about his cognitive decline after the debate. Yeah, it yeah would have they never wouldn't come have cared. Yeah. The, the only reason they that they started pushing that is because they saw it as an opportunity to get a guy that was already losing out. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, I mean, right now, I mean, this can all change because, you know, polls are only polls and we still got a ways to go here. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's a landslide for Trump right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, all the polls bear it out. Like, there's, you you can't, there's some things you just can't come back from. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But talk to people on the left. I mean, like, I've asked a couple of people that I know on the left, like, okay, you saw this debate. Do you think that he should be president anymore? And essentially the answer that I mostly get is like, well, I think that it would probably um, not be a bad thing if he stepped down and let somebody younger step in there. Yeah. I was like, okay, he's not going to do that. Yeah. What now? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I'm voting for him. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, I mean, I've heard that over and and over. I've heard everything from, I would vote for a Biden corpse before I voted for Trump. I would vote for Biden's head in the jar before I voted for Trump. (laughs) Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess maybe fortunately, because that kind of attitude just blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, There's only a small percentage of the electorate that's that hardcore Democrat. There's yeah. enough people that are in the middle and actually are independent or at least undecided. Yeah. And I, I don't see, I don't know what the Democrat Party could do anyway. I actually think that probably Biden is the best chance that they have a beating Trump at this point because yeah. everybody knows who he is at least. Yeah. And I, I don't think that there's anybody that could put in that slot instead that would have a better chance of beating Trump. Yeah. But I, I just don't think anyone has a well, chance of beating Trump at this it's, point. It's certainly not Kamala, um, which <laughs> I think, which I think they're hung. Like they, they're not going to be able to leapfrog her. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, she, she inherits the whole apparatus. The, I mean, her name's already on the ticket. Like, like she, she is the one. Like I don't, I don't think they can take that from her. Well, they have legal problems just in, in their own, in their own bylaws. Yeah. Uh, okay, you weren't at our convention, but there was, there were some questions about if we proceeded in the manner that we were, that it could be interpreted as being in opposition to the Libertarian Party bylaws, yeah. and therefore our candidacies could be challenged in the courts all over the place. Yeah. Well, the Democrat Party bylaws say that those those electors for the primary yeah. um, that have been selected to support a particular candidate have to do so. Have to do so. Yeah. And the it, you know the Democrat Party had the opportunity very early on because all the rest of us could see it. We were being told that we were fools. Oh yeah, yeah. Or being fooled. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they could have. They they essentially precluded any kind of primary system. They did. I mean, they they one hundred percent did this to themselves mm-hmm. um, because they had there was somebody else, but there was RFK was out there yeah. running as a Democrat. Uh, Marianne Williamson is that who it was? Marianne yeah. Williamson. All of the the mainstream Democrats didn't run because they were told not to. Yeah, sure. yeah, they were told to stay out. Yeah, um, and so they ended up with kind of fringe. Yeah. Left wingers and RFK and Marianne Williams. Yeah, they couldn't have that, which was which is the reason they kind of had to cheat to do it because mm-hmm. like RFK wasn't doing bad. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't think he was going to actually yeah. beat Biden, but but he was showing enough support that they wanted mm-hmm. to squash that. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, so that that was their first mistake is essentially precluding any kind of primary system. 
um, making it so that there was only one candidate available in the primary, really. Yeah. And then they screwed up again by going public with that he just needed to drop out and, you know, pr- thanks for your service. Yeah. And expecting that he he would after this debate. I I so I, I may be a little different on you than this, but I, I do think he's gonna drop out. I, I mean I could be wrong. I mean I everything you said checks out other mm-hmm. than there's so much pressure and I just I like I say, it could it could go either way, but I definitely think there's an argument that within the next month I think it's gonna be right before the convention. I, I think he's gonna hold out as long as he can until the pressure's just too much that he doesn't have a choice. I, I think the only way that he doesn't make it is if he dies. Well, that's always been on the table. So yeah. well, and that's the other thing when you ask Democrats, like nobody thinks that he's gonna serve another four years. Yeah. Like there's like nobody believes that. That wasn't part of my polling, but I believe that. It's <laughs> yeah, probably true. Because I've asked people about that. Like they just I mean, you think about it. Like mm-hmm. um and I always go back to the driving thing. <laughs> if Joe Biden was your grandfather, would you let him drive <laughs> your kids to school? Yeah. I mean, would you? That's a really good question. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you answer it. I mean, you know, let's see what you think. But like, I know my answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know my answer too. So I wouldn't let Trump drive my kids to school either. Though, if it <laughs> yeah. If it came, came to down that. to it, if that was yeah. the test. <laughs> yeah. Partly because I don't know how much driving he's done in his life for himself. Right. Um, and partly because, man, who knows what he would say to those kids? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to come back chanting, build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> or lock her up. Or <laughs> yeah, that would be the least of my concerns. <laughs> be yeah. Another one of those, like answering those questions that you're supposed to answer for your kids <laughs> later for some other reason. Yeah, right. Uh, um, so, uh, no, I, I think that they're stuck with them. And, yeah. and that they, they've they done a lot of damage to the, I mean, because how would you feel if you were kind of a, you know, you generally voted Democrat and you'd been supporting Biden all this time. And then right after that debate and you were like, wow, man. That wasn't very good. And then all these Democrats came out and said, saying that he, you know, showing clear signs of cognitive decline and he needs to step aside and he doesn't have, he doesn't have the competency to be president anymore. Yeah. And then they come out again a few weeks later and say, no, 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 we, he's fine. We need to vote for Biden after all. And I think uh, with the, the scenario you just laid out, I think that the, not a lot of the Democrats, they just stay home. Like, yeah. they don't go vote for Trump. They're just like, I'm sitting this one out. Maybe um, they vote Green Party. That's cool. Yeah. I, I don't think they bother. I think, and, <laughs> yeah, which is probably. the reason which is the reason they're so worried about down ballot. Hey, it's, our Libertarian candidate is really left wing. Yeah, so, he is. Yeah. <laughs> go vote Libertarian. Uh, yeah, go have fun with that. Um, but yeah, but that's the reason they're worried about the down ballot stuff yeah. is because if those Democrats stay home, it doesn't just hurt Biden, but it hurts the the other positions too, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Um, this is unrecoverable, though. Yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. There's there's still chips to fall here. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't count him dropping. I mean, I'm with you. Dropping dead. Drop drop. Well, dropping dead's definitely on the list. But I like I say, I I don't know that he'll drop out. But if if it if the voices get too loud and if he I can I can see a scenario where he does it, but I I think it's got to be like no other choice. Yeah, I don't think that happens. It may not. It 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 may not. I mean, I like I say, he's stubborn enough. I'm I'm with you that I I do think that he's stubborn enough to just stick in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's gonna be fun to watch. This is gonna be a fun election. (laughs) Oh man, that uh, it's so terrifying. It really is. It's it, fun watching the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want the world to burn. I don't want the world to burn either, but it's entertaining. Uh you know, Biden just got out there recently and made it a point of saying that we've got a hundred thousand troops in Europe. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Was it Blinken? No, I'm pretty sure it was Biden that said that. Okay. At, at, yeah, at the um at the NATO uh Oh meeting, uh, with the yeah, because all of that's going of on. Yeah, yeah, that's all going on right now. Yeah. Okay. Got a hundred thousand troops in Europe, and that was a message. Yeah, <laughs> um, I it's it's amazing to me. So that reminds me, actually, the uh, No Agenda Show has been pushing this idea that the Council on Foreign Relations wants Biden out. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah. they that that's who's pushing. 
the, to get this, Biden this out narrative. Of there. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't, uh, I don't subscribe. Oh, really? I, yeah. Okay. I, uh, my thought is why would the council on foreign relations prefer Trump to Biden? Yeah. Trump has always been opposed. He hadn't been very effective at stopping it, but he's yeah. always been opposed to our foreign wars. Yeah. Um, Biden absolutely has not. <laughs> yeah. But Biden's been exactly the opposite. And so it seems to me that the council on foreign relations, which is a bunch of neocons mostly, um, would want Biden in office. The only reason I can think of that they wouldn't want Biden running is because they don't think that, that he'll beat Trump. And I agree with that, but I can't imagine who they think that they could put up that would. Yeah. Well, that's just it. This late in the game. Um, I mean, even if it was, um, somebody else, they're not going to have time to build the name recognition to take Trump down. Yeah. And Kamala, like Kamala is going to have to be on the ticket. Yeah. Because of campaign finance issues. Yeah. Like you can't just transfer a campaign's funds to uh, another campaign. I'm telling you. Money that's still in that. Like, I can't remember exactly how it went when I ran for office, but I'm pretty sure I had to identify a charity from the very beginning yeah. that if I dissolved the campaign and there was still money in the bank, that's that where that's where went. the money would go. Yeah. And it, it, it can't be another political organization. I don't think. I don't think so either. I wouldn't think so. So um, I don't know what they do with that. There's a whole bunch of money there. There's no way they can spend it all. No. Well, before they have to get rid of Biden one way or another. Yeah. And so I think that they have to keep Kamala on the ticket. Otherwise that money just disappears. Well, I'm telling you, they can't make like, she's the next in line. They can't take that from her. Yeah. Like, Which the is only by way, the way why taken... they set up all these foundations. Oh uh, yeah. Like, all the yeah. time. So that they can direct that money into their foundation. Their foundation. Yeah. Their charity. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm my own charity. <laughs> yeah. They, I don't think, I don't know what they can do. They have to keep her on the ticket. Yeah. I don't think that they can make her the presidential candidate, although I don't know that they have a lot of choice. Um, because remember yeah. when she was was vying for the presidential candidacy, she was one of the first people out. Yeah, and she had a bunch of um, big money behind her. Like mm -hmm. they were, there was that was the she was the establishment person, yeah. and she was just so unpopular that she couldn't get off the finish line. Yeah, and Tulsi made a fool of her. And that oh, was she great. did. She oh man, uh, so good. Yeah, those were good times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh -huh. uh, you're right. This is interesting. I'm curious how this is all going to play out, and. Uh, I've never seen such a mess in a major party. Like we, we talk about the mess in our party right now. And we've got a mess in our party too. I don't want to get into all of that tonight, but no, no, no. we're, we're in, we're not, we ain't doing a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah. But the idea that that is a representative of a, of a small party that'll never get anywhere yeah. is obviously not true. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. You're right about that. So at least, you know, that's the, that's the white pill yeah. approach to this whole situation is that, Hey, look, I mean, just yeah. because our party's doing this doesn't mean that it, we're down and out forever because the, <laughs> the big parties are doing the same thing. Yeah. At least one of them right yeah. now. Right. And the other one was doing it eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. All right. Well, let's, let's wrap up there. Um, we're on about an hour anyway. And, uh, yeah, let's see. So next week is, the 18th right oh. yeah so um yeah so i don't i don't think there's anything going on i know yeah. I've, I've got a vacation coming up uh yeah. but that's august early august august is gonna be a rough month for us because i got stuff in august too okay so, but i think the rest of this month as far as i know i'm good yeah all right yeah me too i'm pretty sure so uh yeah we expect to be back next week you know, we really should discuss this before we get on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we always have this conversation at the end of the podcast. Right? <laughs> people are like, man, these people are so disorganized. How did they ever get a podcast out? Yeah. We do pretty well. Uh, we, we, we get it done. We do now. Anyway, yeah. we used to be really bad about it. Yeah. Remember the year we got the Atticus Finch Award? She was like, had put out 39 podcasts in the last year. I was like, man, that means we list, missed literally a quarter of the weeks. It's yeah. terrible. Uh, uh, do it better now. Yeah. 
that might have been early enough that we we might have made the transition that year between every two weeks and every week also. Yeah, because we did start off every other week. That's yeah. true. I've forgotten we had started off slow like that. Yeah. Well, then, then we found that we never had enough time to talk about everything we wanted to talk <laughs> right. about. Right, yeah. So it became weekly, yeah. which is a good move. Now yeah. it's like, man, can we fill enough time every week? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, not a problem right now. <laughs> so... We'll be back next week. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. Um, all those other things. Notifications. I don't know. Yeah. There, yeah. There's things that like YouTubers and, and people say all the time that I hear, but I, I never but can't you remember don't, what they you don't say. don't know what they are, yeah. But whatever they say, <laughs> just assume I said that. Do all the things. Um, you, you can leave uh, reviews on i itunes and on um the other oh, place podbean. on podbean thank you yeah <laughs> that's where it actually goes so i don't know <laughs> why i had so much trouble with that yeah. um yeah so you can leave reviews and comments there also uh facebook etc and uh, you can always email me at michael at the liberty and uh yeah that's all the stuff i think so uh we'll be back next week when we finally get this right and in the meantime try to stay free life short live free ciao later mm-hmm.